Okay, I'll start. Okay, so, so thanks a lot for the invitation. Um, my name is Matteo Dell'Amico. I work uh, at Eurocom, uh, which is a research institute in Sofia Antipolis in the south of France. Around us, we have lots of companies, uh, and they all want to do big data, but they all have uh, some problems in doing that. Uh, so this is the reason why uh, we started thinking about Bigfoot and also the reason why my talk was originally called uh, uh, Big Data for Every Company. Then I thought, okay, for every organization, why not? Um, okay, so uh, what about Bigfoot? So between the problems that you have if you want to run your own big data stuff in your company, there are the following. So first, you don't want to uh, outsource your data to some uh, other company, Google, Amazon, or so on. You simply don't trust them, or sometimes for regulations, you cannot do that. On the other hand, if you want to do that in-house, well, it's complicated. It's difficult to find people that actually know how to configure, run, write programs for that. And uh, if you are a company which does not have the resources of a Google or of uh, an Amazon, then it's actually really difficult. Uh, to have those systems and Bigfoot is there in order to help them, in order to make those systems a little bit simpler for smaller organizations uh, of the kind that you have a lot in Europe actually. So uh, we target the idea of private clouds. You have your own uh, system and you want to run your big data analysis on that. And uh, you want the deployment to be as automatic and as self-tuned as possible. Of course, your cluster is not going to be big, so you want uh, you want it to be optimized. You want to write code at high level language because writing code uh, in uh, Hadoop MapReduce, I don't know if you ever tried, it's a pain in the neck. And, uh, uh, you, and we are working on machine learning, we are working on optimization for the frameworks, we're also working on something which is quite cool and I hope we will be able to release as open source, which is um, having raw data and running queries, style, SQL style queries without even the need of loading them into a database. And of course we want to contribute as much as possible to the free software community. Uh, it's a, a pretty small project. Uh, we are only five partners. <laughs> there are two uh, industrial partners, Symantec and GridPocket, and the three academic partners. So the two industrial park, um, partners sit here at the top of the layers of uh, Bigfoot. So on the left you have Symantec which does uh, security analysis. In particular, they have sensors all over the internet and they try to find out which are the attacks that are happening on the network. On the other side, you have uh, GridPocket, which is a smart grid company. They take data from smart grid sensors. They know how much you're consuming at every moment uh, in your house. And they're trying to understand, well, if you're using heating, if you're using washing machine or uh, whatever and maybe they can give you uh, good ideas into what is the kind of thing that you can do in order to spare money, in order to uh, pollute less and so on and so forth. So in order to support all of this, and of course we want to work at a generic level so that everybody benefits from us, uh, we have uh, work on high level languages, we have work on analytic engines on one side, database-like, and on the other side, batch, quer batch queries, and everything actually works uh, in virtualized systems. So we uh, consider virtualization and we use uh, uh, open source extensively, so we are focused a lot on Hadoop on the one side and on OpenStack on the other side. So uh, today, well, we are the Open World Forum, so I thought I would focus on uh, something that is uh, uh, related to software that we have already re released as open, so as open source software that people, uh, that the audience of this uh, conference could actually uh, maybe appreciate. So on the one side I'm going to talk about scheduling and in particular, and in particular scheduling for Hadoop. And on the other side I'm going to talk about OpenStack and the work that we did on OpenStack. Okay, let's start with the, the idea of scheduling in Hadoop. So, uh, I think uh, a large part of the audience uh, is made of computer scientists. The rest is probably uh, of people that uh, are that know computers quite a lot. So I guess everybody knows uh, that scheduling is a pervasive problem in computer science. When we write papers about scheduling, we never know in which category to put them because everybody fi everything fits. And uh, well, the idea is generically that you have a shared resources and several things several jobs that want to access re that resources. So that could be your CPU and 
processes in your, in your operating system that want to uh, access your CPU. It could actually be your uh, network bandwidth, your web server, and you want to share your network bandwidth between uploads that you need to do. Or it could be, like in our case, it could be your cluster and jobs, data analysis jobs that you're running in your cluster. So what happens in most of the cases right now when you're doing scheduling, you do some kind of, between quotes, fair sharing. So what does this mean? Well, you are <coughs> uh, dividing the resources pretty much evenly uh, between the jobs that are running in this moment. So what happens here if you have a large job, job one that is running, a job two arrives, well, between second 10 and 15, they share the resources half and half. Then another job arrives, everybody goes slowly because the system starts to get a little bit overloaded. And then only after uh, the first job finishes, then the other two can go a bit faster, and then after that, you finish the biggest job. Can you do better than this? Yes. You can do better than this. In particular, you can let the small jobs pass in front. What happens here is that you're running job one, job two arrives, well, job two is smaller than job one, so it preempts job one. It runs, it finishes as soon as possible, then you run job three, which is also small, it finishes also pretty soon, much, much uh, sooner than it would do here, and then job one. Of course, uh, this works if you don't care about a half-finished job. If you want just to minimize the response time, which is the time that passes between the moment a job is submitted to the system and the, job, the, the moment the job completes. So these kind of strategies, uh, they're well known in theory to work very well. Uh, there's been quite a lot of work on that, but in reality, basically nobody uses them. Why is, it, why is that, since they're so great? Well, the main reason is that when you have several jobs in your system, you generally don't know how big a job is, how long it will take for you to finish it. So you're scared that your scheduler might take really bad decisions and uh, uh, screw up everything, right? But we are researchers, so we... Uh, tried to, do it tried to do it anyway. In particular, we did it for Hadoop. And uh, in our case, we did a scheduler that ran a small part of a, give of a given job before in order to sample how fast it is and use that in order to get an idea of on how big the whole job is and use that in order to run your system. The results, I have to say, they're pretty good, actually. So here there are some results that we have from some tests. We have run several tests on that, and uh, I would say that uh, we win against uh, uh, typical fair scheduling everywhere. And it's great because our, our system actually works well without even needing tuning. It works well out of the box. So, um, of course, uh, the kind of results that you get here, here I'm talking about 26, 30 percent uh, improvements in response time, they change depending on how loaded the system is. And this means that if your system is not loaded, well, if you only have to run one job, you don't have scheduling to do. But if you have a lot of jobs, actually, the choice of the scheduler makes a lot of a difference. So those results are really good. And uh, um, then we started to look at the relationship between the quality of our estimations and uh, the results. And we were even more surprised because even when the quality of the estimation is not that good, our system was working very well. So we started to think, well, maybe we need uh, more experiments than what we can do on our small Hadoop cluster. So we worked on uh, a simulator. Oh, by the way, this is a scheduler that actually really exists for Hadoop. You're more than welcome to download it and run it in uh, your Hadoop system. It's a question of compiling a jar file or getting the jar file and changing a configuration line. Out of the box, it works. Um, so anyway, we needed to understand more. So we did uh, a, simula a simulator that uh, was uh, trying to understand what was happening with scheduling. And we found out uh, that results were not as we were expecting them to be. So in particular here, uh, we have two variables that we can let vary. So one is the, the amount of error that you make. So here we have large errors. And the, on the other side there, we have skew between jobs. So if you have a few very large jobs and the many small jobs, we found out that actually size-based systems do not work really well. And it's a bit surprising. Uh, we found out actually that this is, this, is, this is actually due to the fact that those schedulers were not designed in order to deal with imprecise job size estimation. So uh, 
basically, once we, once, once we found out what was wrong, well, it was not that hard to find a solution for that. And on the right here, you have uh, our patch. This is uh, an ideal system. So here, obviously, the, blue, the red parts are bad. So this is the uh, response times that you have. Blue parts are the parts where we do better than fair sharing. OK? Um, and yes, basically, we cut out all, the, all those ugly red areas simply with uh, uh, a pretty conceptually simple patch. I would be more than happy to talk to you about this if you're curious about it. Uh, but uh, this is something that uh, you can play around uh, if you want. The, the simulation is available here. The paper is available there. And uh, well, let's talk if you're interested in that. Uh, please use the size-based scheduling. It's great. Let's talk uh, about what we did for OpenStack. So uh, there's something which is really cool in our point of view in OpenStack. In particular, uh, this, uh, there's plenty of very cool things. One cool thing for us is Sahara. Sahara is a, a system that lets you run Hadoop on demand. Uh, so basically, you do simple things such as choosing the number of machines that you want to have in your cluster, the size of those machines. You choose the Hadoop version, you push a button, and voila, you have a cluster in your data center. Then you say, OK, so I'm bored with it. You take it down. This is great. There's something which is even more cool, which is analytics as a service. So you have your jar file that uh, contains the uh, binary for your data analysis. You compile it. Uh, you choose uh, the number of sizes of the machines. You press a button. A cluster materializes in your virtual system, runs your data analysis, gives you your output, and vanishes. Awesome, right? Uh, there's another very cool thing that I want to talk about that we didn't do. Then I will tell you what we did. <laughs> so there is Spark. I don't know if you guys know about Spark. If you don't know, check it out because it, it's great. It's um, a system which is conceptually very similar to Hadoop MapReduce, but it's got two big advantages. First, it's very concise. It's very easy to write code in Spark. It's written uh, in... Uh, you can write code in uh, Scala or in Python. And here you can see how much code you need in order to do a word count in Spark. If you ever did it in MapReduce, you will say, oh my, oh my god, I, I, will never talk, I will never touch Java MapReduce anymore. So uh, this is great. The other great thing is that Spark works in memory. So uh, it's much, much faster than Hadoop MapReduce, which writes to disk very, very often. And basically, it makes, in particular, iterative job run really slow. So uh, it's not our project, but it's something that we really love. So uh, we uh, took the effort of including Spark on Sahara. So now if you want to have your Spark cluster run, uh, appear from nothing, run your analysis and disappear, you can do it uh, on your OpenStack. See, because we made, uh, we made it available in Sahara and in integrated officially in OpenStack since May. We are not done with this. Because uh, um, there's more work in progress. This system works. This system is yet not optimized. In particular, OpenStack has a component that uh, takes uh, uh, machine placement, virtual machine placement, into real machines. And it does it one by one. So the op OpenStack does not know that it's, try to that it's trying to create a cluster. And we want to, have, uh, to place the machines that in your virtual cluster in a sensible way, because they are going to exchange a lot of data between them. They are going to read data from the disk with a, uh, with a high intensity. They are going to write to the disk with high intensity. So uh, de depending on where you place those machines, you can actually get really great improvements. And we are uh, trying to work on that. So that, for example, you need to place machines close, but not too close, because otherwise they will try to start to read on the same disks, and they won't work well. So this is. Uh, something that we're working. OK, uh, I described a few parts of what, uh, uh, what is going up in the, in, in the Bigfoot project. Of course, I, I wanted to get a bit technical because I find this uh, fun. Uh, I thank you very much for your attention. Uh, these slides are available online if you want to check out something. There's uh, the, our website, Twitter, and GitHub and Bitbucket, so you can actually see all the uh, software that we released. So, uh, well, thanks uh, to you all. Thanks for, uh, to the Open World Forum for hosting us and to OW2 for inviting us. Thanks a lot. <laughs>